Welcome to This Week in AI, your weekly briefing on exactly what's happened in the world of AI, but most importantly, what it means for you and your business. It's been a busy week. Something that's been taking the AI world by storm this week is AutoGPT. Now, AutoGPT is an experimental open source application which basically chains together different instances of GPT-4. The developers have given it some additional functionality such as memory, uh, internet access, and file storage and summarization. In this early demo, we see that its capabilities are much more impressive than just GPT-4 alone. For example, we see it browsing the web, collecting information, making decisions, and giving its reasoning as to why it's made those decisions. It chooses the tools to use in order to complete this job, and eventually delivers a much more complete result to a very complex task than GPT-4 alone would be able to do. So what does this actually mean? Well, this is potentially a new paradigm where we see individual specialist models being controlled by a more general master model, which essentially project managers smaller, more specialized models, combining their output to produce much more complete results to complex tasks. One of the strengths of GPT-4 is its reasoning capability, and here we see this reasoning capability basically being unleashed by allowing it to go and use other tools which complement the areas that GPT-4 is deficient in, for example, the ability to browse the web. So whereas ChatGPT is a slave waiting for human input, AutoGPT shows that GPT-4 can be the master and it can have its own GPT-4 slaves which can carry out its tasks for it. And although in AutoGPT's case, it's just using ChatGPT, using GPT 3.5 and GPT 4, you can see how eventually people will be able to link up other models which are really strong in areas that GPT is weak, for example, in sourcing facts or creating images or creating sound. And there's a lot of talk about AGI and how soon it will be until AI is able to perform at greater capabilities than any human. Previously, this discussion has centered on individual models. So, oh, is GPT-4 AGI? No, okay, then maybe we have to wait until GPT-5. But what AutoGPT shows us is that we might not have to wait for any single model to surpass human performance. If instead there are individual specialist agents that are able to surpass human performance in certain areas, maybe the system as a whole can surpass human capabilities much faster. Now, thinking about business and the potential of AI to disrupt different businesses, this breakthrough really expands the surface areas of from where threats and opportunities will come from. Rather than just looking at an individual model like GPT-4 as a potential competitor for your business, you've now also got to think about what the capabilities of all the individual AI models out there are when they're combined and whether the aggregate strengths and capabilities of this combination of models will present a threat much sooner than any individual model will? Answer, yeah, probably. And because this early test shows that it's possible to connect different AI models and then feed them in specialist data, we should expect the rate of acceleration of AI to continue increasing. Now, Amazon's been fairly quiet on the AI front, but this week Amazon announced Bedrock. Bedrock is not its own model, but it does give companies the chance to build their own generative AI apps using pre-trained models from other companies like Anthropic, AI21 Labs, and Stability AI. Now, Amazon seems to be aiming Amazon Bedrock at larger companies building enterprise-scale AI apps, demonstrating that this is clearly where they see the most upside. A little bit like AWS, it seems to see itself as the provider of infrastructure rather than necessarily the provider of its own technology. Having said that, it did also reveal details of its Titan FM family, including one text generative model. And we'll be covering this in more detail once we get hands on it later on. Bloomberg has announced that it is integrating its Bloomberg GPT AI model into its terminals. Bloomberg GPT is really interesting because it is an early example of a company training one of these large language models using off-the-shelf technology on specific data sets. In Bloomberg's case, they've fed it with 40 years of what they're calling financial language documents, as well as a large public data set, with pretty much a 50-50 split between those two sources of data. 
Now from the research that Bloomberg published, it looks like Bloomberg GPT actually performs slightly worse than GPT-3 on general purpose tasks, in the region of 10% worse. But comparing its performance against similar models in financial specific cases, it looks like it performs significantly better, up to twice as well, particularly in sentiment analysis, for example, analyzing whether a particular financial headline is positive or negative in sentiment. Interestingly though, Bloomberg didn't compare the financial specific tasks against GPT-3. Why? Some people have speculated that potentially Bloomberg GPT actually doesn't perform as well on financial specific tasks as GPT-3, but we don't know. Also worth mentioning is that they haven't benchmarked it against GPT-4, which we've seen perform significantly better across a range of specific and general tasks against GPT-3. So what does this mean? Well, this isn't going to be the last large language model that we see trained on proprietary or industry specific data designed to do very industry specific tasks. The tasks that Bloomberg demonstrated Bloomberg GPT on were pretty basic. It was asking it things like who is CEO of a company? Can it write headlines or summarize articles? If you've used GPT-4, you'll know it's significantly better than GPT-3. And Bloomberg GPT already performed worse than GPT-3 in some cases. So I think the big question here is whether any industry specific performance gap between a specialist model and a general model maintains as the general models become better and better trained and higher quality. And even if it does, is that gap sufficient to justify the cost of compiling all the industry specific data and training it and maintaining it given that the foundation models are improving so rapidly? This is a really interesting area. There's a lot of prediction that industry specific data sets and proprietary data will be the key to competitive advantage in an AI enabled world. But I think one of the big questions is whether the foundation models themselves actually become more capable than these sector specific forks as they get trained on more and more usage and more and more user data. And that's a big unknown. But I think another area which is exponentially more interesting than that even is thinking about the Bloomberg data set as one component of a multi-component model. For example, ChatGPT. We saw with ChatGPT's plugin functionality that ChatGPT is now gonna be able to use different tools and plugins to pull in different data and capabilities that it doesn't have itself. Well, what if Bloomberg's data was one component of that and through the Bloomberg plugin in, ChatGPT was able to get access to that data set along with all of the other capabilities from other plugins and its inherent great reasoning and fantastic performance from the volume of user feedback that it's getting. I think that's one area that's really interesting but obviously companies like Bloomberg are going to be very cagey about just sharing full access to all of their proprietary data. If you're a business listening to this thinking I know that AI is going to impact our industry I'm just not sure how then you need to sign up for the power by AI newsletter. Go to pbai.co, that's pbai.co, and sign up for the free newsletter. We'll send you updates about the things that you really need to know about AI. If you don't have time to sit there hammering refresh on Twitter all day, don't worry. We curate the latest and most important updates and tell you what exactly they're going to mean for industries around the world so that you can be well informed to make the best decisions for your business. So go to pbai.co and sign up for the Powered by AI newsletter today. All right, this one's pretty wild. Researchers from Stanford and Google created a virtual town with 25 virtual people, or agents as they call them. These were all individual characters created in ChatGPT. The researchers set up each of these characters with their own personalities and backstories and used an individual ChatGPT instance to represent that person. They then asked ChatGPT to come up with questions, responses, and answers as each of these characters interacted with each other in this virtual town called Smallville. And there's a whole story about them coming up with different events, having conversations, and building relationships with each other. Now, it has to be said, this study isn't perfect and it hasn't been peer-reviewed yet. For example, the human controllers had to remind the ChatGPT agents about certain things and they had to maintain an external memory for them. But despite being flawed, this is a really interesting study. We see the agents producing emergent social behaviors. And emergent social behaviors means that these behaviors weren't programmed in, they emerged, they just happened. 
We see evidence of these characters planning things and reacting to certain situations. We see them remembering each other and their relationships and even checking in with each other. Now I think this all has really far-reaching ramifications, not just for highlighting to us humans that maybe we're not so special after all and our behaviour can be pretty easily mapped, but it has long been a goal of AI engineers to produce believable agents, i.e. AI that represents believable human behaviour. For example, in computer games you want to create characters that have the illusion of life and are able to express themselves and act in a human-like way. This study seems to indicate that generally AI could be one way of doing that, potentially a way that's much easier than the current processes of programming NPCs. But this also gives businesses, governments and organisations a way of conducting simulations and testing different human behaviours in controlled environments. For example, what happens if we unleash some super intelligent AGI in the population? Well, maybe now we can test it in a GPT agent sandbox without actually having to do it. Nah, bring it on. But I think actually the most shocking takeaway from this study is something that people aren't really talking about. The researchers had humans study each of the 25 agents. They basically paired a human with one of the virtual agents and they got the human to study that agent's behaviours and their responses to things in order to try and model that person. They then got the human to role play responses to certain questions as the agent, basically getting the human to try and pretend to be AI, which is pretending to be human. Now, shockingly, when participants were asked to rate how believably human the responses to these questions were, the AI was more believably human than the human. So what does this actually mean? Well, first, on the plus side, this gives us better capability to model the perplexities of human responses and societal behaviours. Using the Terminator example, we can model what would happen if something happened to a group of people, and we can potentially do this much more effectively than we might be able to do currently. On the downside though, this demonstrates that humans won't necessarily be able to differentiate between human responses and AI responses. If we think about misinformation and social media, for example, this just goes to show we can't assume that we can tell the difference between a bot and a human at all. And that produces all sorts of chaos. Oh, and if this isn't scary enough, this study actually used chat GPT using GPT 3.5. It didn't even use GPT 4, which is far more believably human than GPT 3.5. It's gonna be wild, folks. Now, our final point today is on security. Remember the letter from the heads of all of these tech companies asking for a six-month pause in AI research on models that are more sophisticated than GPT-4 in order to allow regulation and society to basically catch up. Well, I think this week's developments have proved that that is a complete waste of time. It's not even worth considering. Why? Because all of the most significant advances we've seen this week haven't come from large companies producing new models that are more sophisticated. The developments that we've seen this week come from people building greater capabilities with existing models, or even in the case of Smallville, old models. If we can build greater capability just with the tools that we've got up to GPT-4, there is plenty of scope to cause all the chaos that you want without needing GPT-5. So will pausing work on training larger and more sophisticated models achieve anything at all? Probably not. As we've seen this week, we are nowhere near reaching the limitations of the current technology that we have available. There is much more progress to be found in working out how we link these individual models together and overcome the individual limitations that any specific model has, either using other models or training data or finding some way around these. If you love AI, don't forget to sign up for the Powered by AI newsletter. You can do that by clicking the link below or going to pbai.co. And drop me a comment, what are you most excited about in the world of AI at the moment?